The SP-404 Mark II has become my favorite musical sketchpad. Freebeat! Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat. Today's patron shout-out goes to Dayton Johnson. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. Okay, seriously, how many damn hats does this thing need to wear? This is the SP404 Mark II from Roland, and for the past six months or so, it's been one of the three main pieces of my live music rig, basically housing all of my sounds that aren't drums. But recently, I've also started using the SP404 Mark II for songwriting, and it's become my favorite musical sketchpad. I would like to shout out Zounds.com for letting me borrow this amazing piece of gear. Good luck getting it back. Uh, please just check out Zounds.com if you're looking for music gear in the U.S. and want some great service. Uh, they have actually never asked me to shout them out even once. This is literally just me telling you how much I appreciate them. So yeah, thank you to Zounds.com. Now, really quick, I would like to address a criticism that I've heard of the 404 Mark II, which is that it does so many things that there are too many button combinations to remember, and that definitely is a valid complaint for some people. But what I will say is that the workflow I'm going to showcase in this video really does not use any button combinations except for one to enter the tone generator, which is just shift and record setting. That's it. Okay, so let me show you why this thing has become such a great sketchpad for me. First of all, there are three different ways to power it, meaning I can easily use the 404 in a myriad of situations. I keep the main power supply plugged in at my live rig so it's always ready to go there. When I'm over here at the filming desk, I power it via USB Type-C plugged into the wall. When I'm at the drum set or out and about, I power it with USB Type-C but via a power bank. Uh, however, it can also run on six AA batteries if you'd like. I just love gear that makes it simple to use anywhere. Next, the I.O. helps it easily adapt to any situation as well. A normal set of left and right inputs on the back, as well as a microphone slash guitar slash bass guitar input on the front, means that you can plug in whatever you want, no problem. These inputs can also be fed directly into the effects buses, and they also have access to some input effects as well, including a vocoder with MIDI control, making for easy and versatile sampling. Of course, there's also normal outputs on the back, but there's also two headphone jacks on the front, one quarter inch and one eighth inch, meaning that it's super easy to work with a partner. Okay, now on to the main reason I've fallen in love with this thing as a sketch pad, skip back sampling. Essentially, the SP404 Mark II is always recording any audio coming out of it, with a roughly 40 second buffer. By pressing the Mark button, you can basically go back in time up to, like I said, about 40 seconds, and hear whatever you were doing on the device, or even playing into the device. You can treat this basically like any other waveform on the 404. You can set a start point, an end point. You can truncate that. You can normalize it from here. And then you can sample it to any pad and treat it like any other sample on the device. That means you can run it through effects, you can gate it, you can loop it, you can reverse it, you can apply an envelope, play it back chromatically, sequence it, you get the idea. For someone like me, who loves to just noodle around on the drums or bass guitar while I'm writing, this is huge. If I play something I like, I can instantly go back and capture it as a sample. From there, I can either just straight up use that captured sample, or I can listen to it enough times to try and record it again, but with intention, more refined, use a proper metronome in my ears, you know, set uh, the measure length when I record, turn it into a real proper sample. This process makes for a very low friction and enjoyable workflow, allowing me to focus on actually playing the instrument I want to play rather than constantly having to worry about messing with my gear. 
Here's a few examples of some drum parts and bass lines that I captured. Keep in mind that while I am a drummer, I am not a proper bassist at all. <laughs> So let's say I'm happy with these three little parts that I've got here, and I want to see how some synths would sound over them. Well, of course, I could just sample a synth into the 404, but I could also use the new Tone Generator, which also works with skip back sampling. I can hold Shift, press Record setting to access the Tone Generator. I know that riff I played was in A. Okay. Let's go up an octave. Two octaves. Let's sample this to a pad. There we go. Okay, so we've got our simple note here. We can now use chromatic mode to play it back chromatically. Let's play an A minor chord. Now we can use skip back sampling to actually go in and find that A minor chord and sample it to a pad. I put that sample right here, by the way. Now let's go back into chromatic mode based on this single note sample and play a G major chord. Perfect. Let's hit mark to enter skip back sampling and once again, truncate this and sample it to a pad. And I've got that on pad 12. Okay, so now let's add some cloud delay, which is actually the effect I have set to the uh, delay button right here. That's cool. But what I want to do is set the mix of the delay to 100% effect. So we're only going to hear the delay. Now I could just resample that, but instead, we're going to use skip back sampling, just because that's kind of the point of this video, to grab that sample. Okay, truncate, zoom in. The screen makes it very easy to figure out where you are in the waveform. There we go. Let's go ahead and resample that uh, to our A minor chord. We'll just overwrite that. How about that? Okay, let's do the same thing with the G major. Nice. I'm going to turn off gate on both of these now. So they just play out. And I'm also going to assign them to a mute group so they will uh, choke each other out. Okay, so now I know I want an F chord as well because the bass goes down to an F there. Uh, and that would be an F major since we're in A minor. So I could go to the tone generator or back to that sample and resample an F chord. But instead what we can do is actually just use some of the basic SP404 Mark II function. So I'm going to hit copy, select my G major, and copy it to this pad right here. Now we have two copies of this G major. If I go into this one and click pitch slash speed, I can actually go down a whole step or two semitones. There we go. Just like that, we have an F major chord. We also need to add that to our mute group. I could also resample these with reverb if I wanted, or I can go into bus two. And on bus two, go ahead and find our reverb. There it is. I can then hold remain and set these sounds, these samples here to bus two. There we go. Let's, uh, let's jam, shall we?
go. Okay, so obviously this isn't ready to be released, but that's not the point of a sketchpad. The point of a sketchpad is to assemble different ideas, play with different melodies and rhythms, the arrangements of those melodies and rhythms, things like that. Uh, and with its portable nature, the UI versatility, and the ease of on-the-fly sampling thanks to Skipback, I think the SP404 Mark II is a killer musical sketchpad. Not to mention the fact that this thing is still priced at just $499 US dollars. The amount of value here is wild, so uh, hats off to Roland on this one for sure. I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.